Hello friends and welcome back to the Tom Photo channel. I just realized I have a wonderful retro style Fuji in my drawer and I have not talked about it in more detail yet. Big mistake. This camera deserves much attention because it has a special place in the evolution of Fuji cameras. We are talking about Fuji X10. Not to be confused with X-T10, it's a compact camera from the line of X-10, X-20 and X-30. This is probably my favorite camera of all, if you don't compare it spec by spec against the most recent cameras. But talking about its specs too much will offend X-10. This camera is more than a collection of specs. It's the package that makes perfect sense brings out the synergy and elevates it to another level. Maybe you have to be a diehard to understand what I'm talking about. The camera does not take super detailed pictures. It has a sluggish autofocus, difficult to use raw files, confusing controls, useless viewfinder, low video quality, almost unusable microphone and other problems. And it's the best camera I have seen. I feel I have some explaining to do. Do you enjoy art? Do you like classic movies? Do you value beautiful architecture? Do you sometimes take a scenic route to work, even if it's longer? Do you agree that experience is part of the result? Do you think that a road can be more enjoyable than the destination? If yes, you are already getting what I'm talking about. This camera is about the experience, about the process, about the style. It helps one understand why photography is so much fun and special. A great picture is wonderful, but the process of getting there matters as well. I know Steve Jobs would agree with this line of reasoning. Just look at the camera's uh, flawless styling. Add the feeling of a small, cold, heavy and precise instrument you sense when you pick it up. Add the old-fashioned leather case. Think about how easy such a small thing is to carry around. Imagine how unnoticeable it can be if that needs to be the case. This camera will make you want to take pictures if there is nothing to photograph. You will be searching for photo ops just to use the camera more and this is where its true power is. The X10 uses thicker metal in its body than any other regular camera and weighs a whopping 350 grams. You'll feel that it's not full of air. It has a wonderful method of switching on. You need to turn the lens. There's no on off switch. The lens is at 28 to 112 millimeter equivalent f2 to f2.8 lens. Yes, you heard me right. f2 to f2.8 gives it amazing capabilities. This does not necessarily translate into a great low light performance though because the two thirds sensor is small by today's standards and uh, pixel crowded at 12 megapixels. But then again, the camera is also very small, just 117 by 70 by 57 millimeters. If you're willing to drop uh, down to just six megapixels, you can take advantage of the EXR technology where half of the pixels are used to record image and the other half to reduce noise so that you can record more highlight information. These pictures will make you smile, even today, let alone when the camera came out. When X10 was released, it was unusually expensive for a compact. This is because it redefined compact and behaved very differently from what people thought of a compact. You felt like you had an upper end camera that just wouldn't let you swap lenses. A hybrid camera with a lens permanently attached would be a better description of this camera. And how much problem is it that you cannot change lenses if you have a small and super high quality 28 to 112 millimeter equivalent lens attached that has macro and super macro capabilities down to photographing small coins? I own more cameras, most take higher quality images, but I still turn to my X10 for close up photos. It's just so great. I also turn to X10 when I need small size. I have taken it hiking, camping, skiing, and motorcycle riding. It's so small and a joy to carry around. I use it where other people use their phone cameras. The camera has flaws, no question. 
However, when I start talking about them, I somehow make them sound like positive things. I cannot help it. For example, the uh, op optical view viewfinder is not usable. It's not even showing exactly what you're photographing. Most people never think about using it. Yet it's there, and I'm happy it is. It's kind of like a fire door on a house. It's almost never used, but most people agree it needs to be there. It wouldn't be the machine it is if the uh, viewfinder wasn't there. They say the camera can shoot 7 to 10 frames per second. I have not seen this. In my hands the camera thinks longer. It's sometimes struggling to find focus, not because it's incompetent. No, this is because it likes to think twice before making up its mind. Wise men don't rush either. They take their time to make sure they get it right. The X10 is adhering to this style and practice. An X10 owner too typically has a, a thorough and careful personality and likes to think about how to best compose the image when, and when to press the button. It's all style, don't worry about it. This camera has lots of buttons and menus that make a novice uneasy. This camera can be point and shoot too, but it doesn't enjoy being that. It knows it can be much more. Think about the piano. Sure, it can be used to make noise using a couple of keys, but in the hands of a true master, all the keys become important, find their place, and are absolutely needed. So is this camera. You look at it from the distance, and you think you got a sheep. Take a step closer, focus your eyes, and there is another animal under the smooth coat, and you know what animal I'm talking about. The X10 can be controlled like a normal DSLR in terms of options you have. Continuing on the topic of buttons, this tiny camera has large turnable buttons that can beat some full-size DSLRs. They're so amazing. Sorry that it took me so long to talk about the feature that is among the most important on this camera. Whatever my camera is, it needs to have at least a large dedicated exposure compensation button and the X10 nails this 100%. The camera uses a X-Trans sensor. Uh, when this came out it certainly was special. It still is. Not all tools know how to handle its RAW files though. RAW therapy is my favorite tool for general RAW file editing. However, it can only handle the X10 files as 6 megapixel files. I hear this is a widespread problem and very specialized tools are needed for uh, getting a larger picture out of it. I have never bothered though, because I only use my X10 for JPEG shooting. And this brings us to a very special topic. You must have heard that Fujifilm JPEG files are special and above the competition. This is all true. Cannot beat Fujifilm in that department. But did you know that X10 largely started this? The camera has old, famous Fujifilm uh, film simulations such as Velvia, Astia, Provia built in as digital simulations. And they are simply great. I would argue that even better than the newer Fujifilm sensors render. There is something old school and nostalgic about these colors that you cannot find anywhere else. You have to experience that to understand. For the image aspect ratio, you can use many options, but 4 by 3 is native to it, making use of all its native, uh, all of its pixels. I always use this when I shoot. The lowest ISO is 100, and the highest doesn't matter. The image uh, starts to degrade way before you hit the boosted uh, 12,800. It won't, I wouldn't even go anywhere near the normal high of 3,200. Stay low with the ISO. I have measured the lens sweet spot of this camera. See the link in the description below. And I concluded that the best range uh, for the lens is f-stop 2.8 to 4. So don't worry about keeping the lens wide open. It likes to be wide open and as such delivers extremely well. The lens is really sharp. The shutter speed range is 1 over 4000 seconds to 30 seconds. If you are using a very modern camera, you're not going to like X10's uh, slow focus, as I already mentioned. Only 49 focus points will cause the focus to miss. Uh, but you can always use manual focusing if you want to. 
The self timer offers two options, 2 seconds and 10 seconds. The screen is not a touch screen and it's not large, however it's pleasant and fully usable. I don't pay much attention to camera screens because they don't affect the final outcome. The flash range is 9 meters and it will work ok as a filler flash. The battery lasts for about uh, 300 images, obviously less if you use flash. To finalize, let me mention a couple of downsides related to other aspects than still photography. Firstly, um, the X10 has no time-lapse recording capability, unlike the modern Fujis do, and for me this is a bit of a problem. Secondly, the best video it can do is high definition at 30 frames per second. This sounds okay, but the outcome is rather undetailed. However, this all doesn't change my opinion about this camera. This is a photographer's camera. I have talked about in length about my favorite camera now. I hope I didn't tire you. Next time when I talk about other cameras, I'll try to be less sentimental. I know I will be, because there is only one X10. Thank you for tuning in to Tom Photo channel and spending some time with me. I certainly enjoyed your company. Please check back with me again soon. Have a great day.